Okay, I think it's time. It's nine o'clock. Linda Shack is finally here, and Lori Ashichek is there as well. So I think we'll begin um, our worship service today. And it is good to have you sharing worship with us here at Lakeview Lutheran Church on the first weekend of Advent. So just one thing to to note for you. Um, Jim Dalton's mother passed away yesterday evening, and Jim and Dana headed to Green Bay this morning, uh, where she lived in uh, a, a nursing facility, and they'll be dealing with that today. Dana was scheduled to be our soloist today, so she won't be with us. However, at the last minute, <clears throat> we went out onto the street and looked for somebody to sing, Wake Awake, and we found a woman named Lynn Najem. So she will be singing one verse because she can only handle that many words at a time. So we give thanks that Lynn will sing Wake Awake, verse one, um, when we get to that point in the service. Also today in your homes, or for those of you on video throughout the week, I invite you to light the Advent wreath that you have arranged or four Advent candles. Um, as, we, as I do it here, you are invited to do that at home as well um, as part of our usual countdown to Christmas. At some point, for those of you who are in the video, uh, uh, not at some point, never mind, forget it, I said that it's really early in the morning. Um, and we also want to remind you about Blood Drive, which is coming up very rapidly on December 10th. Terry, do you still need volunteers? Mm -hmm. Terry needs some volunteers, if you can help. Um, if you've been here for a blood drive during COVID, you know that they really do a good job of maintaining safety, preventing extra people from coming into the building, taking temperatures, wearing masks, distancing, uh, not having snacks and things the way they typically used to. So if you're wondering about that, give Terry a call. He can fill you in in more detail and he would love to get some volunteers organized. And then also he'd love it if you went to the Red Cross website or to the Lakeview or call Lakeview office and talk to Laura and get uh, signed up for a slot to donate blood. Remember, only people who are donating blood are allowed into the building at, at the time of your reservation. No walk-ins as well. So get on board with the blood drive. Also, we have um, in December, December 22nd, we have the uh, scalloped potato and ham dinner. So for those of you who are interested in, in having that, uh, I invite you to make sure you get your reservation in because we are capping that this time at 200 people. We think that's what we can adequately do through the kitchen and through our our volunteers. So call in, lots of people have been calling in and, and that's terrific, um, especially our, our members from the congregation and those who utilize our food pantry, which has been extremely busy. And uh, we are going to continue to provide that community ministry as well. Also for your information, the Christmas service will be recorded. There will not be an option to come in person or to Zoom for Christmas. It will be completely recorded throughout the month of December. Terry will put the recording together and then it will be posted available to all of you on Christmas Eve in the morning. So you'll be able to uh, share that service throughout the day on Christmas Eve. Yeah, Terry's got his fingers crossed, hopefully. Um, you'll be able to share that service throughout the day and throughout the week, however you'd like to do that. I want to tell you that they, we, Lynn has a coordinated a, a sizable group of musicians to provide a variety of different kinds of Christmas music, many carols up for you, and we'll be recording at those people at various times, and then Terry will work his magic and put it all together, and you'll think it all happened on the very same day, except we won't be wearing the same clothes, so you'll wonder why there were costume changes. But anyway, uh, Christmas Eve, that's how we will do the service. And then just to, to be aware, the weekend after Christmas, there will not be Zoom. There will be a recorded service available, um, but we won't be zooming in at nine o'clock. Uh, I think that's Sunday, December 27th. We'll record, we'll post the service, so watch for that. 
but we won't be zooming on that weekend. And then my final weekend here will be January 3rd, and on that day, Pastor Steve Kotke, who's the assistant to our bishop, will be here and will participate in a sending service for retirement with me. So we appreciate his presence. You'll be able to Zoom that day and it will be recorded like everything else. So keep that in mind. Remember to get your Christmas ornament in with your, with your happy faces. Um, for those of you who are viewing this via video, you will see a close up of the ornaments on the tree throughout at, at, at this service before the prelude begins. Terry will be doing that. Unfortunately, we can't make that happen for those of you Zooming, but you can see the tree is behind me. I'm off to my left. It's this thing right, wow, I can see this tree. It's, it's beautiful. And on that tree are just some amazing ornaments. Uh, many of them funny, many of them very memorable. So I encourage you to be creative because a lot of people have been creative um, and have gotten things in. So keep up the, the good work. We appreciate that. So I will uh, invite everybody to silence everything and we will have an opportunity via video to see the ornaments at this point and then we will prepare our hearts for worship during Lynn's prelude. Thank you, Lynn.
even in this time of a pandemic when we cannot gather, Christmas comes. Christmas comes, but not yet. Before we celebrate, let us wait, taking time to remember who is coming, time to prepare our lives, time to look outwards in love. Christmas waits to come. Gently count the days, time to wait and walk with God, time to fill with praise. We light our first Advent candle today. It is a prayer for our suffering world. We struggle with disease, death, racism, sexism, political discord, natural disasters, sexual abuse, terrorism, and hate. And we pray that God, who is often hidden, may be revealed to us and to all. Living God, come to our world when you hide your face, help us to trust your promises and to wait in hope. Amen. <clears throat> As I've mentioned during the season of Advent, the biblical text that we will pursue each week is the assigned second lesson. So it will come from one of the letters in your New Testament Bible. Today, on the first weekend of Advent, we hear from 1 Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always, always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By God you were called into the fellowship of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. <clears throat> well, it's that time of year again, and it doesn't matter if we're gathered here in this room, there are four of us in this room right now, it doesn't matter if you're watching on Zoom, there are about 12 of you there, or it doesn't matter if you're listening to the service um, throughout the week on YouTube or Facebook. The season that begins the church year is here. The royal blue that you see gracing our altar on my stole, the royal blue paramounts that suggest hope, the color blue, hope, have been laid throughout the sanctuary. It's Advent, and unlike Lent, I like this season of the year. So there, Lynn, we each get a season. Now, Advent means arrival or coming. Advent anticipates that this arrival will be an event that will happen in the future. In our modern world, we've turned Advent into four weeks of waiting. Hopeful, confident, disciplined, waiting. And I want to take a moment and confirm right now. Advent is not the season that this church set aside to go out and buy Christmas presents and get them wrapped or send greeting cards or make cookies or host holiday parties or to even sing Christmas carols as much as we love that. That's not the idea behind Advent. Well, I think all of us can certainly understand the concept of waiting this year. We are all waiting for 2020 to end. We are all waiting with anticipation that 2021 has to be a much brighter year. And think about it, it's only been 10 months since the virus hit our nation. During these months, we've been waiting. We've been waiting for those words that tell us that a vaccine is 90% sure. 
We have spent these past weeks isolated in our homes, waiting for something to happen that will control the virus so that we can resume some sense of normal living. It won't be like it used to, but it'll be a lot better than what we've been doing. We just want to go to school again. I know Ben wants to get to school and spend six days a week, because that's what will happen, Ben. Once schools resume to catch up, they're going to make you go six days a week. We want to come to Sunday morning worship here in this empty sanctuary. We just want to go to the grocery store without a mask. We want to get up and go out and eat in a restaurant. That's what I want to do. But we can't. So we wait. And it's hard. And we've been told what to do while we wait. We're told, wear your masks. Wash your hands. Avoid large gatherings. Practice safe distancing from one another. How many times throughout these 10 months have we all been encouraged to be patient? And I gotta tell you, I'm not a patient person to begin with, so this really sucks for me. And I know that most of you are just like me. We wait for the final revelation of Jesus Christ every day of our lives. But it is during the season of Advent when we spend these four short weeks deliberately reflecting on this notion of waiting. We wait for the final coming of Jesus, who we have faith will triumph over the power of evil and death. And unlike the short 10 months we've been waiting for a vaccine for that virus, we wait for the return, the wait for the return of Christ has been over 2,000 years. Talk about being patient, people. We need the season of Advent to help us experience patience and to help us find encouragement as we wait. We need the season of Advent to be reminded of what we are called to do while we wait. And we find some answers in that reading today to the Corinthians. St. Paul tells us that during this time of waiting, God prepares and sanctifies us. That means that we reflect on God's gift of grace, which makes us holy. God does it. God brings us together from all the corners of the earth, from all styles of living, from all economic backgrounds, from all political persuasions, and from all races, genders, and ethnicities. St. Paul reminds us that God does this so that we can be in a close fellowship with Christ. We are marked by God, who has selected each one of us to be God's saints. We have been called by God to join the entire church on earth to be God's representatives in the world. And we are God's representatives in the world when we live like Jesus did. So during our waiting, we are called to love each other by having compassion on our neighbors. The motivation for you and I to wear those stupid masks, which I have off so you can actually hear me, those uncomfortable masks, and to stay away from others is not a political motivation. We use the mitigation techniques because God calls us to show compassion toward our neighbors, toward others in the world. That's all it's about for Christians. God calls us to be good stewards of all that God has created. Remember that first story in the book of Genesis? And then Jesus tells us time and again that we love God by loving our neighbors. And in that reading today, St. Paul reminds us that even though we may think we have been blessed by God right now, we ain't seen nothing yet. We have faith that God will stand firm on the promise that Jesus will return. All of that good news shapes our attitudes and shapes our actions as well. It shapes the decisions that we make every day. 
So hear Paul's words spoken to you one more time. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. The hymn today is Wake, Awake, for Night is Flying, hymn number 436, or the words will appear on your screen. We thank Lynn for singing verse 1. and come quickly to this weary world. Keep us patient as we wait. Make our hearts joyful to trust in your promises. Make the church honest in proclaiming your good news without arrogance. Thank you for giving us the tools and the technology to get the virus under control. May we all make wise decisions to prevent the spread of this disease and therefore prevent deaths. Thank you for the wisdom of researchers who are developing vaccines. Be with all those who provide health care. Be with students and school districts who are struggling. Bring hope to the people of Somalia after Tropical Storm Gati. Make us want to stop gun violence that continues in our community and in our nation and recently in Brooklyn, New York. We pray for all those living in poverty in the world that we might find ways to improve conditions and end hunger and homelessness. Be with those in our midst to struggle without employment or adequate income. Comfort anyone who is grieving today, including Darlene and Steve Wood as they mourn the passing of Darlene's mother, and Jim and Dana Dalton as they mourn the passing of Jim's mother. Bring your healing touch to, to those who are ill, including Mary, Pam, Georgia, and anyone else whom we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers for everyone in need. Amen. Together we pray the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In the music for meditation that Lynn will play this morning in just a moment, you will hear two familiar Christmas carols. They're both written by an English poet named Christina Georgiana Rossetti. 
Rossetti was known for writing romantic and devotional poems. One of those poems is today's arrangement of In the Bleak Midwinter. Rossetti wrote this poem in January of 1872, and at the time she entitled it A Christmas Carol. The poem first appeared as a Christmas carol in the English hymnal in 1906 when Gustav Holtz set the words to music. In 1909, composer Harold Drake set the words to another melody. But we are familiar with the music from Holtz, and it is this melody that appears in the Evangelical Lutheran Worship Hymnal. The second poem that's incorporated into this piece of music was written by Rossetti in 1885 and is based on the words that you can find in 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. Rossetti titled this poem, Love Came Down at Christmas, and it is what the hymn is actually called today. The, third, the poem first appeared as a hymn in 1908 in the Oxford Hymnal. Many composers have set this poem to music. This carol is unfamiliar to most of us. It is not included in the Lutheran Evangelical Worship Hymnal. Thank you, Lynn.
receive the blessing. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior, still you with love. The unexpected spirit, guide your journey now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, prepare the way for the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.